Hey guys, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles. And we've done a few videos talking about you know, how to balance the business side and the animal side of what we're doing and about how to persevere and how important perseverance is in this hobby. And now I want to do a video about another P word, how important that is, and that's how to kind of keep it, and that's passion. Uh, this is a really good time to do this video because I know you guys don't see what time it is, but I've been up since 5 in the morning. I know camera guy Kurt's been up for a long time. We both had day jobs. We went until we worked all day. We got done with those. I went directly to our brick and mortar shop where we worked at all day. And now we get home and it's actually just started the next day now. We just passed over midnight and we are filming for you guys. And then we have to turn around right when we're done with that and go into feeding and maintaining our reptiles. So this day in particular is always our long day. And the reason I bring that up is not to complain, because it's not a complaint, but how do you do that constantly on a weekly grind? We just did our video on our daily grind, so like, this is the things I do every day. You know, and Kurt does the same type of stuff, just with the rodents. On a pretty much daily basis, he's in there at some point, and he's cleaning you know, individual racks almost every week cleans all the racks, he has a schedule he cleans by. So how do you keep that passion when you're doing that? And as I've stated many times, and I'll state again, because we just had another comment on it, which I find really amusing, that uh, we've taken exactly zero dollars and put in our pocket. I have yet to make a dime. And we've been doing this for four years. That's kind of misleading when I say I haven't made a dime, because we do sell snakes. And I talked about the business side of it. And this runs, at this point, pretty much on its own. It doesn't really cost me anything to do this. I've been able to add really cool stuff that I want to play with and expand into things that... We have things coming that would have just been a dream. And now they're becoming reality here soon. So it, it's been an amazing ride. But it hasn't been a money-making ride. It hasn't been a financial pit, though, either. Because of that last video we filmed. You know, it, it covers itself. But there's more to it to keep your passion than just that. And the only thing I can really tell you is that when you come down here, or in your room, maybe yours is upstairs, I don't know where your snake room is, and you're dog tired, and you've been working all day, and really all you want to do is just go to bed, put on a crappy show on Netflix, and fall asleep. But you come down here, and you pull open a tub, you know, and you see something like this. Right there. And for me, that's all it takes. This is enough to get me excited. This is enough that it instantly calms me down. There's a few things that I haven't shared on here that, well hell, today is a day, I might as well. You know, I work for my day job in a fairly stressful industry. I, uh, I've worked in law enforcement for a great number of years. Some of you probably know that that know me personally. I've actually worked in law enforcement for my, literally my entire adult life. The time I could vote, I was working in law enforcement doing 911 dispatch, and then when I could doing patrol work, and I've done everything else in cop work, you know, that you can kind of do. Uh, and with that, it creates a very stressful environment some days for me. To the point that, you know, I have dealt with and seen things that most people never will have to frequently. Uh, you know, with you know, your, your dead bodies and whatever else. And just a lot of conflict. And I've seen a lot of violence. And, and I've seen people do horrible things to each other. And I tend to always have to show up at people's worst moments in their life. If you think about it, you never see a cop when things are going great, right? You're always having a bad day because you're either, maybe you got pulled over, maybe you're in a car accident, maybe you're getting really bad news like somebody's passed away, you know, or maybe something's bad happened to you, whether it's, you know, your car broken into or other things that are even more horrible that I'm not going to lay on you. And, and we, we take all that in. And so this here became this therapeutic outlet for me. You've probably heard me say sometimes that these are like therapy for me. And, and they are. They really are. Because you know, I can come down here 
and it's just a simplistic thing to take care of them. And this animal here, it doesn't judge me whatsoever. It honestly doesn't have the capacity to judge me. It's not going to be on TV, you know, doing protests and talking about how terrible we are. Or not going to be on TV talking about how much they support us or anything like that. It doesn't care what I do for a living. All it cares for is that its needs are met, that it's taken good care of, you know. And it's a very instinctual creature. And I find, I find a lot of solace in working with these animals. Because they're going to be what they are. You know, they're never going to be what they're not. People sometimes don't always act like what they really are. But the snake's going to. So is that dwarf caiman. The rattlesnakes especially will. So for me, that's where I find the therapies. I come in and I work with something that in a lot of ways is more honest than any human being ever can be. Because this, at the end of the day, is going to do what it, <laughs> wobbly, but it's going to do what it does as a reptile and animal. And I can appreciate that. And that's across the board. And that one's pretty sweet, you know. That one's a nice one. I can get, oh, this one made a big mess. I can get this psychotic thing out. And it also is going to be just what it is every time. It's never going to be what it's not. You know, and it's going to try to bite me and it's going to try to do this a lot of times because that's just its attitude problem. But I know that. It tells me that up front. I don't have to sit there and try to wonder what it is. So it's... It is very therapeutic for me. And in a lot of ways, that's where my passion comes from. It comes from there. That's one spot. And there's a few other spots. It comes from the pride I have when I make creatures like, like that. Or like this. You know? And this. These are all my own holdbacks. Hey, you. God, this is Captain Hissy Pants, too. Or like this. And when I make these animals, and I get to see these animals every day, and I get to take that pride in my work, nothing beats that. Nothing beats that for me. That's how I keep my fire. What I want to know is how do you keep yours? You know, how do you keep your passion? Because we're all built a little different. But one thing we all have to have to be successful at this is passion. Because even if I was taking money, let's say every time I sold a snake, Kurt and I split that money 50-50 and we stuck it in our pockets. I can tell you this, it wouldn't be enough money to make my time worth it. I know what I charge for my time on a daily basis and I'm never going to get that out of this room. And that's okay. That's okay because I'm not doing this to make a lot of money. I'm doing this because it's what I'm passionate about. And what, it's one of the things that makes me happy and one of the things that kind of balances my life out. And it gets me out of the mode of always, always being the cop and I get to just work with animals. So that's what drives me. That's a little personal information on, on me. Kurt, what keeps your passion? Um, I don't know, like some days, you know, I work a regular job and I get off about 7 o'clock and I have to go to the pet shop to do some cleaning and I just, just seeing all the rats and, you know, them producing and just know that, you know, that I take care of them and that they're kind of just um, relying on me to feed them and water them and change out their bedding and, you know, just <clears throat> seeing them grow and, you know, how the different combinations and all the different attitudes the different uh, breeders have and you know mostly just you know seeing all the the baby ones grow from pinkies to pups to smalls and mediums and I remember you even had that one used to hand feed he was like your buddy you know so I think there's a little more personal attachment with the mammals than there is with reptiles for these kind of reptiles wouldn't you say yeah and they breed a lot more too you, you can see like generations like with you know, these breed once a year, and with the rats, you can have, you know, three or four generations or more in a year. Yeah, that's, that is pretty cool, but for me, you know, I like the once a year because it's a patience. It's, so it's different things that drive different people, but the point that I want to make is that if you don't have something that drives your passion, you're not going to be successful. And 
in order for this hobby to work, and the reason we kind of did those videos, we've kind of done them all leading up to this, is because they all work together. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, we did the one where we talked about you have to persevere, because there's going to be rough times. If you just quit the first time the water gets rough, you're done. I mean, that's, you're, you're giving up on yourself, and you owe it more, how do I want to word this? I think you owe yourself more than that. You know, I know I owed myself more than quitting when I told my story about how times got rough and we went through that anyway and we kept on and now we've grown and now we're doing great things. I'm really excited about our future. And you owe yourself that too. You owe yourself to persevere, no matter what it is you're doing. You also, when we talked about the business side of this and that you have to kind of be dual-minded, it's because at some point, you know, I know people say you can't take the money. We, we cut a little heat on that. Not so much on the video comments, but trust me, we did catch a little heat and I expected that. But if you start doing the math, if I was just doing all of this without selling snakes and allowing them to cover the bills on it, it would get extremely expensive, you know, really fast. But by doing that, you know, when you talk about having a brick and mortar shop, we don't take any money out of that either. We're reinvesting all of that to grow some really cool stuff that we want. So, you know, it all is to feed our hobby. And if we didn't do that, we would literally probably be paying... Oh God, if we had to buy rats, you're probably talking $600 a month in rats on a good feed week. Uh, and, and then you, you know, you're starting cleaning your electricity and, and your bedding and those things. So we would really be spending, you know, probably eight to $10,000 a year just to do what we're doing. And well, then if it's a financial crutch, it causes stress in your relationships and it's going to usually kill your passion. You know, and, and that's no good. And then you have to find a reason why you're doing it. Because obviously it's not money because we don't make any. You know, they, they have their own bank account. They keep the money. I spend it all on them or I spend it all on equipment for them. So what drives it? You know, what, what makes you passionate about what you do? And I don't have that answer for you. I can tell you what makes me passionate. I'm hoping that you have something that makes you passionate. So if you have those three things taken care of, you have your financial house in order for your hobby, you know, you're ready to persevere through the rough times, and you have your passion, those are the keys to success, I think. Maybe I'm missing one. If I'm missing one, tell me what I'm missing, and we can talk about that too. But to me, that's kind of that triangle you need, all three of those legs together, that perseverance, you know, your house in order. I mean, we've talked about that several times, whether it's you know, having your feeder set up, having your equipment you need to make it successful, and having that house in order, and then also having that passion, having that, that passion that drives you to want to do this, even on a day where you're dog-ass tired, you've been up forever, and, and all you really want to do is pass out of sleep, but yet you're able to come down to your snake room, and I'm not, you know, no matter how tired I am, the time I get down here and get ready to do this, I'm excited to do it. Like, I'm happy to do it. And I look forward to doing it. And that's that passion that drives. So I hope you guys have yours. And I hope you kind of see why we, we did all of those videos and how they kind of work together. Uh, Kurt, do you have any questions? No. Nope. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll try to think of something fun to do and not be damn serious. I get a little more serious when I get really tired. So that's probably what's causing that. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you later.